a warm greeting, today is the 1st of September 2023, and I am meteorologist Ruben Garcia. Today marks the beginning of what climatologically we know as the most active month of the Atlantic hurricane season. As you know, the Atlantic has been very active over the past few weeks. We had Hurricane Adalia crossing over Florida, Georgia, South Carolina, and North Carolina. Currently, its remnants are located to the west of Bermuda, although it is expected to re-intensify into a tropical storm and impact Bermuda in the coming days. Additionally, we had Tropical Storm Franklin that developed in the Caribbean waters and crossed over the Dominican Republic. It rapidly strengthened into a powerful Category 4 hurricane and has maintained an east-northeastward movement this week, staying over open Atlantic waters. Today, it is expected to dissipate into a non-tropical system. Furthermore, the remnants of Tropical Storm GERD have been moving northeastward and have managed to reorganize. We once again have a tropical depression with the opportunity to briefly strengthen into a tropical storm. On another note, Tropical Storm Jose formed yesterday, very close to the circulation of Hurricane Franklin. Fortunately, these three tropical cyclones will be moving northward in the coming days and should not pose major problems. Additionally, a fifth system has a high probability of becoming the next tropical depression and perhaps tropical storm Katya. Fortunately, it will also maintain a northwestward trajectory over open Atlantic waters, posing no threat to land areas. Lastly, and what we will be closely monitoring, a new tropical wave will be emerging from Africa over the weekend and will encounter very favorable conditions to become a powerful cyclone as it moves west-northwestward. Although we will have days to monitor this upcoming tropical wave, it is important for residents of the Eastern Caribbean to stay vigilant about its development, especially as we prepare for the peak of the season, which seems to be very active for at least the next two weeks. This new tropical wave we will be monitoring from Africa already has a 50% chance of cyclonic development over the next seven days. This is due to the support it has among global models, and it is highly likely that this percentage will continue to increase in the coming days. Take a look at the following graph, which illustrates that historically, the first two weeks of September have seen the highest formation of storms and hurricanes in the Atlantic. In fact, the University of Colorado predicts that conditions will be very favorable for above-average activity in the Atlantic, with a 70% chance of an active peak season, primarily because we are currently in a phase of the Madden-Julian Oscillation that is situated over Africa and the Indian Ocean. Historically, this represents optimal conditions for cyclonic development in the Atlantic, mainly due to reduced wind shear across the tropical Atlantic. Here is the forecast from the ensemble of European model members, which predicts that wind shear will be below normal across the tropical Atlantic in the coming week. Don't forget that sea surface temperatures in the tropical Atlantic remain very warm, currently 2 to 3 degrees Celsius above normal. There is ample energy for the formation and strengthening of tropical cyclones. Now, let's talk about this upcoming tropical wave. As I mentioned, at 8 a.m., the National Hurricane Center had increased the chances of cyclonic development to 50%, and all models predict the development of a tropical cyclone. For example, the GFS model has the potential for a tropical storm to be moving west-northwestward by Thursday or Friday. Additionally, the European model also has a tropical storm or hurricane moving in a west-northwestward direction between Friday and Saturday. Another reliable model is the UK's, which also has a tropical storm or hurricane moving in a west-northwestward direction by the end of next week. The German model also aligns with this forecast, with a strong hurricane or tropical storm moving across the tropical Atlantic by the middle of next week. Basically, all models develop this upcoming tropical wave, making the chances of development extremely high, thanks to the favorable conditions created by the Madden-Julian Oscillation. This cyclonic development is almost guaranteed. Now, the big question is whether this system would pose a risk to the Caribbean. That will depend on two factors. The first is how quickly it manages to develop. The faster it forms, the better the chances it has of moving west-northwestward, passing to the northeast of the Caribbean. This is because we currently have an upper-level trough located in the center of the Atlantic. The faster it forms and strengthens, the more likely it is to gain latitude due to the influence of this trough moving through the region. Additionally, if it strengthens, it would help it gain latitude before reaching the Caribbean. However, if this upcoming tropical wave takes longer to develop or remains weaker than anticipated, it could potentially take a more westward trajectory and, in the long term, could pose a threat to the Eastern Caribbean. For example, the European model shows a fairly rapid development of this tropical wave, with a tropical depression forming between the Caribbean and Africa by Monday or Tuesday. Here we have the upper-level trough in the atmosphere, which would influence the system to move on a west-northwestward trajectory. However, keep in mind that high pressure will also be strengthening in this area, which is why we should remain vigilant in case this disturbance could travel further west. 
this is precisely what the GFS model indicates, where it isn't until Wednesday or Thursday that a tropical depression develops, with the trough moving northward and high pressure establishing itself in the Atlantic. This could potentially lead the system on a westward trajectory. At this moment, we have two scenarios, one shown by the European model with a system developing by Tuesday or Wednesday and possibly taking a more west-northwestward trajectory, which would be the better scenario for the Caribbean. Meanwhile, the other scenario from the GFS model shows a slower development of this disturbance, allowing high pressure to strengthen and the trough to move northeastward. Of these two scenarios, which one is more likely to occur? If we go by the ensemble of GFS model members, you'll see that the vast majority of them indicate that this upcoming tropical wave could strengthen quite rapidly and gain latitude before reaching the Caribbean. However, there are 10 to 15% of the members that indicate it could take a more westward trajectory if it remains a tropical storm or Category 1 hurricane. According to the GFS model ensemble members, the highest probabilities are that this system will pass to the northeast of the Caribbean. Similarly, we have the ensemble of European model members, with the majority of them strengthening the upcoming tropical wave into a powerful hurricane. However, the vast majority of them also show it passing just to the northeast of the Caribbean. Keep in mind that 10-15% to 15 of them indicate a more westward trajectory, and these paths are fairly close to the northeast of the Caribbean. Considering that this is a long-term forecast, it's important for those in the Eastern Caribbean to stay vigilant over the next few days. Well, that's it for this video. Over the next few days, I will be closely monitoring this upcoming tropical wave. Don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel by clicking the red button below the video. Then, click the bell icon to receive notifications when I upload new videos. I hope everyone has an excellent weekend, and let's all be prepared for this peak of the season. See you later.